Good evening. I'm going to call the October 16th licensing hearings and public safety committee to order at 4.30. Uh, do roll call. Alder Peterson. Here. Alder Lefebvre. Here. Alder Heideman. Here. All the rest is here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Introduction of committee member and staff. All right. Approve, I'm looking for approval minutes from the September 25th, 2024 meeting. All in favor of approving those minutes, state aye. aye. Chair votes aye, those are approved. All right, items for discussion, possible action. There is gonna be one change. We are going to move item number 11 to up after item number eight, just so all our presentations are at the end. So item number six, resolution number 88-24-25, resolution <clears throat> authorizing application for the Edward Byron Memorial Justice Assistance Grant pro Program Fiscal Year 2024, local solicitation and entering into a memorandum of understanding with Sheboygan County. Good Chief. afternoon. Um, so for the committee's uh, information, this is a, essentially a grant that we receive every year. It's a burn grant. It's the largest um, criminal justice grant program by the federal government every year. And it's a formula grant, which means that every year we're eligible for it. All we have to do really is apply in order to get it. And, and there's a formula that determines every year how much we would get. This year the number is 15000 $487, and then we're required to split that money with the county. And so there's an MOU attached that you have to enter into for us to apply for and receive the grant. Um, it lays out how we would share the money um, with the county. Already, any questions? All right, seeing none, I'm looking for a motion. I move we accept the resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Chair votes aye. That's approved. Item number seven, resolution number 92-24-25, a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for several vehicles for the Sheboygan Police Department. Chief. Okay. Again, a uh, similar item to, to how we do things uh, over the last couple of years uh, because of supply chain issues. Um, we've um, essentially worked out a system where, where we're able to get our orders in early. Um, so in the next um, two or three weeks, um, Ford will be opening up um, the order period, which is usually like a 10-day period for um, these kinds of purchases to be put in. Because of the supply chain in the past, um, there's a, a big lag in getting cars. So if we don't put the the order in now for next year. We, we won't get the cars next year and we'll be behind what's been happening to many mis municipalities who don't do this is they get their orders canceled and say so they never get their cars. Um, so an example would be last year we ordered four squad cars, um, one EcoBoost and um, three hybrid cars. We got the EcoBoost in, we ordered them at this time last year. We got the EcoBoost in in February. We got the first hybrid in two weeks ago and we're still waiting on the other two hybrids. So this is the reason that we're putting in the order in early. This does not um, require the city to, to spend any funds until um, next year. So you can still approve or disapprove the CIP plan. I if these cars aren't approved in that plan, then we would cancel the order and there would be no obligation for the city. Any questions? I move to uh, accept the resolution. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. That's approved. I am number eight, resolution number 84-24-25, a <clears throat> resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a clinical affiliation agreement with St. Nicholas Hospital, the Hospital Sisters of the Third Order of St. Francis for firefighter paramedic continuing training, education. Assistant Chief. Oh, hold on. 
You're fine. Right over there, I'm kind of, because yeah, we're in a different room, I'm all confused. <laughs> you're good. Okay, um, this clinical agreement just gives us the ability to um, utilize the hospital emergency department for our paramedics, uh, specifically our probationary paramedics that need um, clinical time start and IVs to keep their proficiency up and kind of get them to where we want them to be by the end of their probation. Um, this is actually a really nice clinical agreement for us. We've never really had the opportunity to do this before from the department, um, so we're just looking for approval for the agreement. If there's no cost to the city or anything like that. All right, any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye, that is approved. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, we'll jump to item number 11 quick. RO number 57-24-25 by the city clerk submitting various license applications, cigarette slash tobacco license for application <coughs> number 3687, Ryan Menzer to the cigar box. Everyone hear me? Yep. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Audrey Kratz. I'm the Assistant City Attorney for the City of Sheboygan. I am not Travis Peterson, Director of Public Works. I'm just sitting here for today, so I have a microphone. Um, so staff is recommending denying the application. Um, when this application came to the department, or excuse me, um, the LHPS committee a few weeks ago, um, we had, uh, I believe one of the older persons had asked to maybe hold this when we had, until we had more information on our municipal code and if we allow retail sales out of homes. Um, so technically, the city of Sheboygan Municipal Code does allow retail sales out of homes, but only in very limited circumstances. Um, examples of home occupations um, that are allowed to be used are um, include things such as personal and professional services and other handicrafts, um, and the following regulations also apply. Um, no more than 25% of the total living area of the dwelling exclusive of garage and porch areas shall be used for the home occupation. Um, the use of the dwelling unit for a home occupation shall in no way be incompatible with the character of nearby residential areas, and in no instance shall a home occupation create a nuisance for neighboring properties. So here um, the applicant is hoping to um, set up retail sales for cigars out of his home in a nicer residential area. Um, it's obviously up to you to decide if you think that would be a nuisance for the neighborhood or if you think it would change the character of the neighborhood. Um, in addition, um, retail sales of cigars and uh, maybe other cigarettes or other tobacco products um, is not an example of a personal or professional service and it is not a handicraft. So it wouldn't count under one of those home occupation uses. So that is why staff is recommending denial of this application. All right, any questions? Alder Heideman. Thank you, sir. A lot of local residents uh, have uh, businesses out of their home. In fact, I can drive down Lakeshore Drive and there's a guy selling bakery right in his front yard. Okay, now, I'm in favor of granting this license to uh, Mr. Manzer. In any, you're not, uh, no more than 25% of the total living area. You're not, you're gonna fall within those guidelines, aren't you? I would have to, I would have to think so. I don't think that, that he's gonna be piling up cigars outside of his house and in his garage. So um, I'd like a motion to approve the license for uh, Mr. Menzer. Do we have a second? Alrighty, seeing I don't have a second, do I have another motion? Well, I have a motion that, uh, well, I'm kind of uh, stuck on this because I, I, I do agree with Joe that there, ha there have been a lot of different entities where they were doing a business out of their house, uh, Amway or whatever you want to call it. You know, there's a lot of things like that. So it seems like we're setting up kind of a double standard here. I, 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 How would you advertise this business out of your house? Would it would it uh, would it mean? See, so, Mr. Menzer. Yes. Yeah. Why don't you come up and you uh, can answer some questions if that the committee has. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Would, would it mean any kind of signage that uh, might be uh, upsetting to any of your other neighbors? Uh, the reason why we have the ordinance that we normally don't have businesses operated out of a residential area. Right, right, and I think that is to the first point that, um, that 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 the assistant attorney brought up. 
And to that, I will agree that it is something that I even don't want to have in my neighborhood where it would bring in traffic, stopping and starting, more foot traffic. That's actually not my intent at all. I'm a licensed wholesale distributor of cigars and tobacco. Explain that, please. A wholesale uh, distributor can sell to retail establishments, golf courses, other cigar retailers. However, in my, in my business, I've had a lot of personal individuals, namely friends, who have asked, hey, can you sell me something? And one in my position could do so, but not legally, because that would constitute a sale to an individual consumer. For that, I need a retail permit. And that is what I'm applying for here. I have no intention of setting up a sign, flashing lights, neon billboards in my, as was stated before, very nice neighborhood. This is more to abide by the laws to make sure that taxes are paid, that I'm abiding by the laws of the city. And this is just simply for friends, family members that might want to engage in the, the cultural experience, the craftsmanship, and the tradition that comes with products made in other countries. So it is a little different. I'm not gonna do many of the things that you may think. Again, this is more of just word of mouth, friends of friends. Again, this is my attempt to be an upstanding citizen, a law abiding, and do everything legally as I have done with my, with my other licenses. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Alderman, I mean, would you uh, restate what your motion was? Uh, oh. Mr. Menzer, a license to be able to uh, sell product out of his home. With the explanation that uh, you just gave me, I, I tend to agree with that, and I'll second it. Any other discussion? I got Yep. I'll yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm having a hard time seeing the sale of, of uh, tobacco as a craft, and... Um, you know, I think our ordinance, when I look at the ordinance or when the ordinance is read to us now, this to me does not seem like this falls within the auspices of what that ordinance is designed for. And I, I think that my position on this would be, while I think what you're saying is commendable and I understand uh, what you're trying to do, I don't feel like our ordinance really supports that. And Maybe eventually this could be something that we could bring back to the table and, and, and revise the ordinance, but right now, in my opinion, I, I'm not in favor of this because of that reason. Um, so I'm, I'm not in favor of this. All right, any other discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. Chair votes? Nay. Sorry, Mr. Menzer. Well, maybe, Audrey, in the future we can look into something more, maybe not more accepting for this kind of what Mr. Menzer is trying to achieve. Yeah, like, like I said previously, I think the issue, and like uh, Alder Peterson had said, I think the issue um, here is just that uh, selling retail sales of the um, cigars out of the home is just not a personal professional service or a handicraft so if that is something you would like me to look into I'm happy to do that I would um, ask if other alders are um, in agreement with that maybe we can get that in writing and then I'll um, I can look into it would other alders be interested in an ordinance of that nature I mean we could certainly look into it we for sure definitely. so why don't we why don't we look into that and then okay Probably November, we'll come back and discuss this again, and then hopefully by maybe by end of the year we can get you your a, a new license for that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, I am number nine. Presentations by potential applicants for available Class B alcohol beverage licenses. So what I'm going to do is I have a list of everybody 
that applied for this. And I'm going to call you three times if you don't, if they're not here and they don't come, then we'll, I'm just going to keep moving down the list. All right. So first on my list is Melissa Plotz Hudson. If I may, before we get going with the presentations, I have a few things I'd like to tell both presenters and the alders, just sure. make sure we're on the same page. Yep. Great. All right. Um, first, for presenters, um, the presenters here will give a presentation no longer than five minutes to the older persons on why they believe their business should get the Class B liquor license. You should be answering the question. Audit. What? Slow down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you should be answering the question, um, what is it about your business that would be best for the city? Why should the alders pick you for having this Class B liquor license? Alder persons may ask questions of the presenters. Questions could be of the sort of things that are not limited to the following. I'll just give you some examples. Um, what hours will the business be open? What uh, will the business be open to the public? What's the location of the business? Will the business be serving food? What type of food will the business serve, if any? Is 50% of the gross revenue of your business going to be food or will it be alcohol? Will the business meet the expectations to have underage persons on premises? Like I said, these are some of the types of questions alders may ask, but they may ask different ones as well. Um, and older persons may have criteria that they can use in determining who to grant the license to, and these factors were written down in guidelines that were accepted by this committee earlier this year, and I've given each of the alders a copy of the guidelines so they can easily refer to them. Um, a few things that the alders may, uh, may keep in mind um, is to follow the committee policies attached um, that I have given you to determine who should receive the license. Do not consider things such as ethnicity, gender, etc. You should make this decision based on which applicant is the most deserving and best for the city. Um, do not make this decision based on personal wishes of maybe types of food you'd like to see. Um, you're not required to grant the license just because two are available. If you would rather wait for a project that you think is uh, better for the city, you may do so. Um, you should keep in mind that we have a limited number of licenses available. Um, again, you're not re required to issue a license just because we have them. Some applicants um, or some committees in the past have chosen to keep one or two available if they have a quote unquote rock star applicant come through that they really like. Um, and you may wish to ask any input uh, that the police department may have on this decision and uh, you should consider the policies approved by this committee in guiding your decision. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so back. Melissa Pletz Hudson. Melissa Pletz Huston. All right. And Melissa Pletz Huston. All righty. Yep. It doesn't have one. Nope. Nope. Not. Some of them do, some of them don't. I'll let you know when it is. Okay. Uh, city clerk. <laughs> the names that are highlighted in yellow are the ones that responded that they were going to be here right. today, but you're just gonna go Yeah, I'm just gonna go through and give everybody an op opportunity so that they can look back and see that they missed their opportunity. Uh, Rebecca Ian with Mark Marcus Cinemas. Rebecca Ian with Marcus Cinemas and Rebecca Hien with Marcus Cinemas. Alrighty. David Sabrowski. David Sabrowski. David Sabrowski. Ryan Sork. Ryan Sork. Ryan Sork. Okay. Riverside Boat Club. Riverside Boat Club. Riverside Boat Club. <clears throat> Robert Heimerl with Sheboygan Riverside. Oh. Robert Heimerl owns various properties. Robert Heimerl 
Robert Heimerl. Okay. Joshua Galicia. Joshua Galicia. Joshua Galicia. Alrighty. James Kupfer or Bailey Kupfer with Watershed Hotel. Alrighty, come on up. So, Scott, she wants to plug in her laptop. Alrighty, the floor is yours. Hi, hi everybody. Um, so I'm with Watershed Hotel. We applied two years ago quite a few times and now we're back again. Um, just because we've seen the challenges of not having one and having the Class C is very different than having the Class B. Uh, so Watershed Hotel, our owners are James Cupper, which is my father, and Paul Weaver. My name is Bailey, I'm the general manager. I've been a Sheboygan resident but for about four and a half years. Um, I'm on Visit Sheboygan as the Board of Directors. I've been in hospitality for almost 15 years now. And I brought along Dax. He is uh, training to be a service animal, so he's not on his best behavior tonight, so I apologize, but he's gonna help us along here. Um, we are a luxury boutique uh, hotel. We have 25 rooms with an outdoor event space um, that overlooks the Sheboygan River. So if you know where like 14th and Erie is or Kiwanis Park, um, that's where we are. Um, we opened August 1st of 2022, so we have now uh, completed two full years. Uh, this is just a basic hotel layout. We have king rooms, extended stay, queens, some executive rooms, um, just some basic room photos. What we look like, our bar seats 36 people. Our pavilion seats 200 um, max. We try to keep it too closer to like 150 for events. And then our lobby area sits 80. Any and all of this furniture can be moved and has been moved for multiple events. Um, our weddings, we've averaged over the past two years, 15 weddings per season, so that's just weddings. Um, this past year alone, we had 49 events and we'll probably get a few more uh, before the end of the year. Um, benefits to Sheboygan, we do a lot of business to business. We uh, push for local catering. We don't do any catering ourselves, so we don't do um, any dinner food on premise, we do do breakfast, but not food for like our bar or anything like that. Um, we push for restaurants to come in, florists, things like that. As of September 28th of this year, we've had over $2 million in sales. Um, and as of yesterday, we have collected over uh, $122,000 in taxes just for Sheboygan County and another 77 for Wisconsin. So we have been a benefit to the area in collecting money that way. We do alcohol for both our events, but just on the daily. So today we've already sold a few beers to guests and stuff before I left work and came here. Um, and then these are just some photos of our space. Um, we are looking to get the Class B just because having the Class C, which we are so grateful for, um, it's so disruptive to our customers. I always have to hand them a beer and a bottle opener and I have to explain to almost every single person over and over again why we have to do that. And we're always responded to, that's just a weird rule type of situation. The same with events. Um, we do our alcohol mostly as self-serve or they can hire a bartender in to serve alcohol because we personally as um, workers of the hotel or owners of the hotel cannot serve it with the Class C. Um, so it gets kind of hard when you're running an event and I can't open a bottle of champagne. I have to go find somebody else and be like, hey, <laughs> here's an opener, here's a bottle. So it has kind of impacted us a little bit in that way, just having to explain this over and over. Uh, during a typical event, like a wedding, where we make most of our weddings average around fifteen to $20,000, that's not what we're making profit-wise. That's just what they spend in Sheboygan County. Um, I probably explain it to almost every single guest at least once. 
why we can't open the alcohol or serve the alcohol. So we really want to do that. Going into that, if we do get a Class B, we would like to open some sort of our bar area to the public. We can't do that now. It's just awkward <laughs> to have people come in and expect a beer and to be handed a bar uh, can opener to it. Um, so that's the real reason we're, we're looking for the B, just to make it easier on our staff, grow the business a little bit more, and have um, reoccurring visitors just to the bar area in our hotel. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Alder Pierce. Yeah, I have a question. So, would your intent then be, if you were if you were granted this license, would your intent then be to have the the bar space open to the public? We would love to have the bar space open to the public. It is open right now. Guests can come in anytime during saleable out saleable hours to get alcohol. Um, our cutoff is 9 p.m. because of the Class C license. So even though we have somebody at the front desk till 10, we can't sell. So that's kind of a weird rule too that we have to live by. Um, but we have guests, we have, we call them neighbors, come in and get beers and stuff like that. It's just, like I said, it's not a normal bar experience or coming into an event area like that to have to open your own alcohol, mix your own drinks, make punches because you don't want to mix drinks during an event things like that happen. So I do think that impacts how many weddings we sell in the long point because they don't want to deal with our weird uh, bar rules, which we do follow. <laughs> Any other questions? I have one. This one's for Louise. Would the, with where Watershed is with its proximity so close to the main drag down in Sheboygan, would that be an issue that PD would have if there was a drunk driver, let's say. Yes, yeah, sorry. No, I don't see any impact that they would have if they okay. got the license. All right, thank you. All righty, any other questions? All righty, thank you. Thank you. All righty. Next is Linda Hang. Linda Hang, Linda Hang. Alrighty. Next one is Jesus Cruz Colchado or Amando Cruz Colchado with Fast Tacos. Jesus Cruz Colchado or Amando Cruz Colchado Jesus Cruz Colchado or Armando Cruz Colchado. Alrighty. I'm really sorry for whoever's name this is. I'm probably going to butcher it. Vasudev Adhikari with Harbor Bar and Grill. Vasudev Adakiri Kari Basudev Adakari. All righty. Eric Rowland, who's interested in a comedy club but does not have a location. Eric Rowland. Eric Rowland. All righty. Gregory Vandemark with Local Press. Gregory Vandemark with Local Press. Gregory Vandemark with Local Press. Alrighty. Dave Engeldinger with Historic Sheboygan Masonic Lodge. Alrighty. You were close on the name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave Engeldinger uh, here on behalf of the Historic Sheboygan Masonic Lodge Foundation, Inc. Uh, the lodge is located at 1138 Union Avenue, which is the former uh, VFW Hall, uh, 12th and Union Avenue. Uh, the, the foundation purchased the building back in, oh, I think that was 2020 or 2021, uh, when we moved out of our location at St. Clair Avenue. Uh, just horrible repairs needed there. Uh, but anyway, 
having moved into this location, we have in the basement uh, what used to be the bar for the VFW, uh, where they served uh, bar food, beers, drinks, uh, whatever. Up to this point, uh, that space is utilized solely by the members of the lodge. Uh, after our meeting nights, we uh, meet downstairs for dinner. Uh, we now have a functioning kitchen where we have a flat top grill, we have a deep fryer. Uh, but again, it's just for the members' use and uh, just kind of a benefit uh, for being a member there. Uh, we would very much uh, like to open this up to the public at least on a limited basis or have it available for rentals. Uh, the key being here is to drive our fundraising. Uh, as with many service organizations, uh, memberships are dwindling, uh, revenues are declining, and we're looking for new ways to uh, fuel our charitable activities here in Sheboygan. Uh, the Sheboygan Masonic Lodge Number no. 11 has been around for uh, over 175 years now, in fact, uh, Mr. Mayor, you were at our celebration a couple summers ago to celebrate 175 years of service to the community. Uh, we're very interested in continuing that service, and again, we're using, uh, or we would like to use this uh, as a generator of revenue to do so. All right, thank you. Do we have any questions? Alder Pearson. Yeah, I've got a couple. So, um, yeah. number one is how many members are currently in the uh, organization? The foundation, uh, as a corporation, there's uh, five board members. Uh, the Masonic Lodge, who generally uses it, uh, all the foundation members are members of the lodge, but there would be uh, probably about 20 active members. Uh, so it's not a large group. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we wanted to open it up, make it available for rentals, uh, open it up for you know, the public to come in, have a sandwich and a couple of drinks. Okay. I have a yep. follow up really quick. Um, okay. The other question is, um, have you thought about like what the hours would be? I mean, I know this is really premature. That's question, my first question. And the other question I had is, is there a precedent for other Masonic lodges to do this? Um, I'm in the Elks and I'm also mm -hmm. a member of the the Yacht Club and I know those are both private organizations. We don't really have um, it open to the public necessarily unless they come as guests. Right. Um, now, to address that, uh, many years ago, uh, Sheboygan Lodge Number no. 11 of the uh, Freemasons of Wisconsin uh, formed the separate foundation as a separate corporation, which allows us to operate in such a manner. There is one other lodge in Wisconsin that has a foundation attached to it. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're using it for, uh, but this does allow us as a separate entity to operate as, as such. You know, not uncommon to, you know, for example, the Moose Lodge or uh, other lodges that have a, a bar attached to it or, you know, even something like, I know there's the Riverview Club. Uh, so we're looking to do something like that. Uh, by the way, as a club license, not uh, generally open to the public, but we do want to do so, like I said, at least on a limited basis. Uh, right now, some of us are trying to uh, just bring in other members uh, uh, twice a month on a Thursday evening, uh, just to generate some ongoing interest um, and generate some revenue. We also host a breakfast once every month on the second Saturday, uh, which is, uh, again, open to members and their guests. We would like to expand that and make it more available to the public. Okay, uh, I happen to be very familiar with the building that you have. My father was a member of, uh, I believe that's 1230 VFW yes. Post. Yep. And uh, while he ret when he retired, he'd go to the bar that was operated downstairs there, mm -hmm. and he'd be playing cribbage yes. all the time. It, it, I know that it's a it's a functioning. <laughs> it would be very easily to make it a functioning bar. Yes. And. Uh, if you uh, do decide to do this, bring back that fish fry they used to have on Fridays, because yes. it was delicious. We would love to do so. And to add to that, uh, the bar is original. We haven't changed a thing about it other than pulling out the old taps. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, for our members, we keep uh, bottles of beer handy, uh, but again, we're not selling it to the public. So uh, we did clean it up quite a bit, uh, <laughs> gave it a nice facelift, got rid of all those decades of tobacco smoke up in the ceiling and along the walls. And I think you'd be very pleased with what we've done with it. All right, any other questions, comments? All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Gerardo Reynoso with Club Liam. All right. All right, hi. Yeah, I just uh, would like to apply for a liquor license because, uh, you know, I've been open for uh, a year and a half and uh, so, so far, you know, my business is not that good because I, I lost a lot of customers, you know, uh, they want to drink hard, hard liquor. So, it's what I'm just applying for, for a liquor license right now, so. All right, any so, questions, yep. comments? Alder Pearson. Can you just tell us a little bit about the club? I don't even know where it's located or can you tell us anything about it? Talk about my building? Yeah, yeah. tell us more well, about your the business. Building has been, you know, it's a very old building. It's been open for, uh, you know, a long time. And, uh, but, you know, the other, other uh, uh, owners, you know, uh, they uh, close it because no business goes there, you know. Uh, What's the address of the business? Uh, yeah, uh, 933 Indiana Avenue. East. Okay. So people walk in and you know they, they want to drink hard liquor. They want to eat at my restaurant, and I don't have hard liquor, so they just walk away. You know, uh, so been losing a lot of lot of customers. Do you offer food at your yes. bar? Yes. Yeah. Are there any any other comments, questions? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. All right, Gerald Fager, Fager with Uptown Slice. Hello, I'm Gerald Fager. I am a co-owner of Uptown Slice with James Owen. Um, we have been currently operating at 1116 Michigan Avenue for the last 18 months, roughly. We currently have a beer and wine license and we would like to expand to a uh, intoxicating liquor license to kind of bring in, um, <clears throat> there's some items that we would like to have that are under the spirits that we currently can't have with our license. And like we'd like to do like an Aperol spritz type drink, but that's, it's under a diff, you know, it's, it's classified as something else. We've had requests from some of our customers for some maybe some high, more high end liquors, some nice bourbons, things like that. Um, our intention is not to have a full bar. We would have um, select liquors, but um, more up on the upscale side of things to add to our program. Um, we also, um, our hours are, they're not full hours. We would be, op we're open during the day and we close at 10 p.m. So it wouldn't be, it would be more for the, you know, for the dinner hour. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I'm James Owen, uh, co-owner of Jerry. I'm also calling our Three Sheeps Brewing in town here. Um, so yeah, after we opened, uh, we really want to focus on on quality in our shop. Uh, so we we do we do a small amount of things. We try to do them very well. We do just uh, pretty much just pizza for food. Um, that accounts for about 80% of our sales. Uh, and then we do we did build out a nice bar because I did want to make uh, you know our, our shop into a nice gathering place. Um, definitely more, um, I guess, a little different vibe in there from the other spots on Michigan Avenue. Uh, we try to uh, have more of a curated craft beer and, and wine menu uh, for our customers, which has been very appreciated. And we started to get a lot more just customers coming in and, and having drinks. Uh, however, like Jerry said, uh, we, we don't have the ability to sell liquor or canned cocktails. A lot of the popular uh, items that you'd see in, a, in an Italian restaurant, we're not able to sell, uh, which we definitely lose business. Uh, we have some customers that I know would, would become a lot more of a regular customers if we did uh, have some uh, hard alcohol options in the shop. Um, we also have done uh, some really nice uh, pairing events at our shop, uh, beer, a beer pairing dinner, 
uh, wine pairing and we'd love to do a cocktail pairing or a bourbon pairing dinner, uh, we would definitely focus again on, on, on the quality side of things. So we'd like to you know, have a nice selection of, of whiskey in the shop. Uh, but again, as Jerry said, not a full, a full rail bar. We're not gonna be mixing cocktails and we're only open until 10 p.m. Uh, but uh, this would also be another option for uh, the people that are interested in buying out our shop and having uh, hosting a, a group event there. Um, again, we're very limited uh, with what we can do with our current uh, license. Um, and yeah, we would like, like to have you know, canned cocktails, so we'd like to batch cocktails and have maybe cocktails on draft, uh, or one or two, you know, just a couple. Um, and uh, some Amaro, um, if you're not familiar, it's an Italian um, digestive, uh, which is a very popular, uh, in the area actually, weirdly enough, Fernet Branco is a very popular, especially industry drink. Uh, we, part of the reason why we have the hours that we do is we, we really like to cater to our fellow uh, service industry uh, clientele um, and friends uh, in the area. Uh, so we're open a little bit later so that when people get off their shift, they can come by, grab a slice. And again, the fact that we don't have uh, liquor, I think uh, prohibits uh, some, of, some of those folks from uh, from coming by and having a slice with us and, and having a drink. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, uh, we're located at 1116 Michigan Avenue. So that area uh, with our, um, the uh, cafe across the street um, that, that opened up a little bit before us and the uh, boba tea shop right next door, uh, that area is becoming kind of revitalized a little bit and it's becoming a, a nice little little area. And I think this will just help us kind of increase the um, uh, just the niceness of that area and uh, for allow us to offer some more stuff, so. All right, any questions? Alder Heideman. Seating capacity in, in your building. Uh, indoor seating capacity is 25. We do have a, a nice outdoor patio as well that can uh, seat another, you know, 25 or so. Um, yeah, so it's a small shop, but, uh, but again, um, you know, we would love to stay there for as long as we possibly can. Uh, there's only so much we're, we're having trouble keeping up with the demand for our pizza, which is great. Um, so we, we can only make so much pizza out of that shop. So we're looking for ways to uh, make our business more sustainable, long run, and hopefully stay there for the rest of our lives. So, okay. any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Jesse, War Warriash with Pig Stop. All righty. Hi everyone, I'm um, Jesse Vlach, my wife Celia Vlach, and we are here for uh, uh, Ambassador Bar and Grill for uh, the liquor license, and my wife is gonna tell you guys why <laughs> we should deserve it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're looking at opening Ambassador Bar and Grill um, early November. We're on North 15th Street, um, real close to where it turns into LS, so kind of on the edge of town. Uh, we're looking to do some uh, traditional Indian food, so not really what you would find in a regular restaurant um, where it gets kind of Americanized. We want to do it more traditional, uh, more home style, kind of like someone's mom's cooking for you in the kitchen. There's also planning to be uh, some Indian street food, so same ingredients, but a totally different take out of it. Turn it into tacos, turn it into pasta, turn it into something else. Um, and we will also offer some American fare, a lot of requests for steak sandwiches on a hard roll, uh, burgers, things like that. Uh, we wanna be able to appeal to everyone, and part of that is being able to offer liquor as well. Uh, we are looking at opening early November as a soft open, hopefully mid-November or fully. Um, We've been responsible business owners for a long time. Jesse has had the pig stop for 18 years. We've been together for almost 13, so we've worked on it together since then. Um, he also owned Clark before that, so he's got lots of experience checking IDs, being really careful, doing all the things you need to do. It's just that none of it was ever consumption on site. Um, we also were owners of Yellow Cab of Sheboygan for seven or eight years. Uh, so we've seen what happens when people get overserved. We don't want any part of that. You know, we want to be responsible business owners in Sheboygan as we have been, but we like to be able to expand that. Um, we want, you know, we have lots of experience handling drinkers. We know how how it goes when they get overserved, and we don't want that to happen. Um, we expect our hours to be until about 10 o'clock at night. Not late. Not a late night bar. Not planning to have anyone drinking for hours. Just a couple of drinks with their meal. Um, it would help sales and interest if we could offer liquor. Um, 
Indian food is delicious, but it's better with a beer and even better with a whiskey. So <laughs> we think it might help. Uh, Great. Any questions? Any questions? I guess I, yeah, what's the capacity of the uh, building and is it currently, I, I'm not familiar with it, I apologize. <laughs> so building. tell us a little bit about like th the size and what's uh, So it is fairly small. We are actually planning on mostly takeout food. Okay. Uh, but for the patrons who do choose to eat on site, then we want to have as many drinks as they'd like to, as many varieties of drinks, not as many drinks as they would like. Um, and your plan would be then, is this more of a restaurant then, or will it actually be a bar? Or yeah, we're it... calling it a bar and grill. So it's got a bar seating at the actual bar is mm -hmm. for 12. And then okay. there's some room for a few more chairs on the side or tables. So it's, it's a fairly small capacity place. Not looking to have a wild crowd in there, just some folks yeah, who want to enjoy good out. food. Yeah, but it is mostly looking to be takeout. So I, I guess Lauren Pearson's question is, what's your like capacity? Like, are you expecting 20 people? Uh, that would be about the max, okay. probably. Um, 12 at the bar, and there will be more chairs okay. along the wall. Thank you. But, yeah. Any other questions? Comments? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Ji Zhang with CNG Bar Lounge. All right. All right. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Ji Zhang. Uh, my husband and I are the owners of CNG Bar Lounge that used to be the El Caminos on 819 Michigan Avenue. We are one of the first Hmong American bar restaurant lounge banquet hall business that opened in April of 2024. We currently are open Wednesday through Saturdays, 4, 4 p.m. to different closing hours each day. We are a small family owned business looking to serve the community with a wide variety of food, drinks, and different activities for all ages. Our drinks range from Thai tea, beer, different cocktails with and without alcohol beverages. Along with just not drinks, we offer a diverse selection of Asian cuisines. A touch of Thai, Hmong, Korean food to American food choices. We also provide live entertainment events, karaoke, cornhole tournaments, special holiday events, shows, and hope to offer much more in the future. Our banquet hall holds approximately 140 people, also available for rent for any kind of special events, including birthday parties to weddings. We provide a full catering service for our banquet events and outside events. Our goal is to be able to serve the community with the best variety of drinks, food, and entertainment possible in the city of Sheboygan. Besides providing all this, we have given back to our community by helping with different fundraisers for our events, sponsoring golf outings and Miss Hmong America from Minnesota, along with sponsoring Sheboygan Hmong Women's Society and the Hmong Association that gives back to our community in many ways a scholarship to our children and sp supporting our Sheboygan Hmong New Year. We currently are contracted with the previous owner, Simon, for this year. It would be great to take that responsibility and liability off of the previous owner be able to carry our own liquor license. Our family-owned business consists of responsible and loyal family members that have been trained in their line of work and licensed in the roles. We really hope that we will be given that chance and opportunity to apply for this liquor license to keep our small business running and growing to support our community. And everyone is welcome to come visit us. Alrighty, so I have one question probably for Meredith. Um, if their current liquor license is under the previous owner, would, would he still be able to re-up it? Or would, now that it's a new entity, would they have to get a new one themselves? Is that the reason why? Okay. Okay, and so now I guess follow up to that for G is, um, so are you renting the space from him? Is that So the... we, it's a family, so we have like three families that sure. purchased from him on like a land contract. Sure. So our contract with him is until we can get our own liquor license, okay. we're contracted for a year. Okay, so. all right. Thank you. Any other questions? Alder Heideman. Sure. Are we allowed to um, give a license to uh, uh, the same address? So two different licenses? I'm sorry, what was the? 
Meredith, why don't you? Yeah. Sorry, I was asking. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. So they are using Simon's. Oh, okay. Um, license, and they have a contract with him. If council were to grant the ability for them to apply, Simon still owns that other license. And would he have six months to open a new place for that because it's assigned to him? Or do you know what I'm saying? Because it's the same yeah, it's like address. A, like a ping pong. Yes. I'm not sure the I'm answer. not sure. That yeah. It seems like a very intricate question I'd have to look into. Yes. Um, since, yeah, these licenses are given out specifically to specific people, and if they're using another one and then they get a different one, it seems difficult. So I, I can look into it, but I don't have an answer right so, now. So, okay, now here would be my question. Let's say, could he, probably not, but could he transfer his license to the new people that are in that building or no? Is that, because it's his building still and he has a contract for them to use it. I, I believe he would be able to. So he could give them the license, is that? I, I believe so, as long as he's also not using it, it would go to a specific person. Like, what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, let's say he didn't, I don't know how long his license is for, but if he wanted to not re-up, but give them the spot that he has for this license, would he be, would they be able to take that spot? Theoretically, yes. Okay. I would obviously have to look at the application to make sure everything is fine, but right. theoretically, yes, that is. That would work that yes. way. But the license goes, so if you, I, I am assuming that if they were granted the ability to apply, Simon <clears throat> keeps the license because it's his sure. license and he could open another restaurant with it or because it's his, he doesn't have okay. to give it back to the city for somebody to apply. I, okay. um, and I think that's why the agreement was made in case he wanted to open another place, okay. he could stop and take the license from Away. them because it belongs to, to him. him. Does that make sense? Or the LLC or wherever, yeah. okay. so, whoever sure. is the on the application. Sure. Um, so if they got it, I'm, I would. I believe you're correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions after my long one? Alder Heidemann. My question is, is he already in violation of not operating a business with a liquor license, doesn't he have a time frame that he has to have a business where he sells liquor? No, because he is. He because is he's through her. Do, he is still the owner of the of the liquor license. <clears throat> they are just operating under him. But okay, he so, is still. So, the, so if we gave them a license, his license would automatically not. He can still hold that in limbo and, and wait a year before he'd have to do something with it. My thought is it's the six month rule okay. that, you know what I mean, you can't mm -hmm. hold a license without operation right. for more than six months and that's the council rule. Mm -hmm. So that would okay. be my understanding of that. All right, yeah. uh, that's fine. All right, Alder Pearson. Yeah, I think uh, the question I guess I would have then is have you talked to Simon to know what his intentions are with this license? Because it seems to me like we potentially have three licenses at play here instead of two, is that correct? Because are we limited to two licenses now or no? Yes. Okay. There are two that are available. And he still has the license for that was El Camino's that's now C and G. Okay. It actually belongs to him. So and if you grant it to them, he has, I would believe, six months to use that in a different capacity. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions for G about <laughs> well, I will say that I've uh, been to the business. I was there for the grand opening. Um, it's a it's a great business. I'd love to see it thrive. And and uh, I guess I was under the impression that you already had the license. I didn't realize that Simon that it was still somebody else's license at the time. So, right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, Ricardo Montes. Come on up. Hi. So my name is Ricardo. I'm the owner of um, Pop's Burger and Pizza House on Michigan Avenue. I have um, 
another building in Michigan that I want to open up a wine bar. Um, I want to focus more on um, wine tasting, um, being, it's, um, being able to go there, taste the wines, be able to buy the bottles. Um, I have um, I also have a food truck that I would like to have there to be able to serve some of the, our food in the inside the establishment. We're not looking at being more of a bar. It's mostly just a wine bar, um, opening for dinner from four to ten, something like that, and doing a couple of cocktails, just to be able to bring in on more of the more tourists, more locals. Alrighty. Any questions? How many people would you have? Um, it's about 40 people. That's about at, what at the max. space would be? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, I didn't catch the address again. Uh, the, uh, the address for that will be 925 Michigan Avenue. Okay. Would you have food or is it mostly just wine tasting? Um, <coughs> we want to be able to provide our food from the restaurant across the street, Bob's okay. Burger and Pizza House, and also the food truck that we have, the factory. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, Luke Pfeiffer, Harbor Winds Hotel. Um, I have a handout. Is it okay yep, that I yep, pass that out? Yep, come on. Yeah, on. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I didn't want to rely on technology possibly not working, so I uh, decided to go this route. So thank you for allowing us to present uh, regarding the Class B liquor license. Um, as you said, my name's Luke Pfeiffer. Uh, my wife, Monica, and I, along with uh, some partners, Chad and Megan Markovich, who are friends of ours, purchased Harbor Winds Hotel last May in 2023. Sheboygan is near and dear to me as I grew up in this area, graduating from Sheboygan Area Lutheran High School. I started in hospitality here at Holiday Inn Express in Sheboygan uh, right before my senior year at uh, Sheboygan Lutheran. I had no intention to work in hospitality. We owned an internet provider here locally called Digital Access and worked with TCBI back in the day. Unfortunately, a fire struck and destroyed the Victor building, if you remember, behind the Memorial Mall uh, in June of 1999. I met my wife, uh, Monica, at Lakeland College, uh, now university, I still can't get over calling it Lakeland College, and we both graduated with degrees in hospitality management. I had the privilege of being on the opening management team at Blue Harbor Resort here in Sheboygan in 2004. I worked at other properties, including Lake Lawn Resort in Delavan and Kalahari Resort in Sandusky, Ohio. After spending 11 years in product management at a hospitality technology company, my wife and daughter, who is now nine, and I returned to Wisconsin in 2020 when we purchased Maxwell Mansion in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Maxwell Mansion is a 28-room boutique hotel featuring a historic mansion built in 1856. We have two craft cocktail bars that are highly rated in the area that focus on the craft of mixology. The Apothecary Bar features true classics as well as modern twists on classics. Our speakeasy bar, which is located in the basement of the mansion, has a secret entrance and has been rated one of the top 10 speakeasies by USA Today. In addition, we offer a wide selection of mocktails. We have a pretty large mocktail program, so non-alcoholic uh, spirits, beer and wine. And we strive to work locally throughout Wisconsin. Um, we work with Jay Henry, uh, Central Standard, Three Sheeps, Dancing Goat Distillery, and La Crosse Distillery, to name a few. Uh, the handout towards the end has examples of some uh, menu items that we have down at Maxwell Mansion. Uh, we obviously would customize those to fit Harbor Winds and Sheboygan. Um, I was honored when Mark Zipper, who still owns the American and Holiday Inn Express here in Sheboygan, approached me about acquiring Harbor uh, back in 1999 after they purchased it, um, following it being used for housing during, following the flood in 98. Uh, I actually had the opportunity to work down there, and I remember installing toilet seats and uh, towel bars. 
Our first goal when Mark brought this opportunity to us was to enlarge the lobby area. Uh, the property is 28, uh, was 28 guest rooms. Uh, we're now changing it to 26. Uh, but it, the only lobby area was a breakfast addition they did off the back of Harbor Winds Hotel. And Harbor Winds is right by the bridge there uh, at 905 South 8th. Uh, we already completed a substantial uh, portion of the renovation of our front desk and adding a bar. Um, we're just waiting for the bar top to come in. And then this next week, Quashus is gonna be can begin construction. We're actually gonna take out one room uh, that is next to the breakfast room to expand that into a larger lobby area. Uh, we did receive earlier this year a Class B beer and Class C wine license, and we've started service just to hotel guests at this point. Um, but we're excited about the opportunity to expand the spirits and offer craft cocktails here in Sheboygan. Our bars are not open late. We always say nothing good happens after midnight. Um, uh, down in Lake Geneva, we typically close at nine or 10 during the week. Um, and weekends, we are never open past 12. Uh, we envision here, we're probably gonna be at about the 10 or 11 o'clock mark. Uh, Harbor Winds has struggled off season, which is one of the big reasons we're pushing for this. The prior owner, uh, the Zipperer family did close it during the winter. Uh, we are keeping it open year round now, and we want to bring in unique experiences here. Uh, we do mixology classes, mocktail mixology classes, meet the maker events, we'll bring in distillers and they'll talk about the spirits, either alcoholic or non, um, and give the opportunity to test them and uh, learn more about them. Um, and really to be able to do this on the beauty of the Sheboygan River and captivate on uh, that wonderful area really makes it perfect. Uh, we're gonna continue to work with the Lakeland University. Our hotel manager graduated from there just a few years ago, and we employ students from there. Thank you again for allowing me to present, and if we receive it, I know we'll bring a unique experience here to Sheboygan. All right, thank, thank you. you. Any questions? Uh, the, <clears throat> you do not have the, uh, the seating capacity set right now, so, but can you give us an estimate yeah, of what you believe the capacity would be? It'll be right about 40, 45. Okay. Uh, and that's just based on seats. We're not cramming stuff in because we'll also use that area for breakfast. Um, and then we'll do light food service, like we do flatbreads at our property down in Lake Geneva to kind of complement. And also this uh, entity would be an open to the public facility? Yes. And not just for the, uh, the guests? Correct, yes, it would be open to the public. Alrighty, any other questions, comments? Alrighty, thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, two more. Brennan Seehofer. Brennan Seehofer. Brennan Seehofer. Alrighty. And Stefano Vigiletti. Stefano Vigiletti. And Stefano Vigiletti. Alrighty, that is all of our presentations for today. We'll move on to item number 10, which is discussion and action regarding granting opportunity to apply for available Class B alcohol beverage license. All right, so we are going to do this where you can chime in with the mic and we will start with whoever wants to for what we're thinking for granting. All righty, Alder Heidemann. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you all for giving a presentation. I appreciate it. Um, I know Watershed has been here time and time again. Okay, it's a hotel. It would, it definitely would improve their business. But the other thing is, um, there's a uh, for Club Leon being on Indiana Avenue. And all the other bars around that facility, that, that the property, all have uh, full licenses. And with all the development that's in there, it basically puts him at a disadvantage for not having a Class B license. Um, so it's, it's hard to make a choice as far as what would be the best place to give a license so that would have a more of an impact 
for either a residential area or a development, Harbor Winds, okay? There's w a lot of things that are gonna be happening down there. Is that something that uh, we need to provide that gentleman with a license so that he can get that business going? Um, uh, there's, there's a number of great choices. Uh, Uptown Swice, they're on Michigan Avenue. Everybody drinks on Michigan Avenue. All the other, that's their, that's their competition. So we have, to, we have to make some type of a decision as to where it would be the best place to, to, to grant a license and also if we want to grant two licenses or just one license. Yes. So I yep. just want to bring it up, up to some of my fellow committee members that haven't been uh, through this process once before. It's not an easy decision. You know, you're affecting businesses and uh, I'd like to hear your comments. Yep. Thank you, Alder Heideman. What are we thinking? All right, Alder Lefebvre. The thing that, uh, that uh, comes to my mind is uh, we have this whole discussion going on currently about how we're going to make the harbor and uh, the marina area more vibrant. Uh, I believe bringing an establishment at the beginning part of that you know, like the A Street Bridge is right at the beginning of the north side of the, uh, you know, the harbor area. Uh, so that kind of puts a little hash mark on that for me. Uh, the idea of uh, that the people that have the thing that used to be El Camino, that they're uh, using the license from El Camino I, I I still can't get my head around why that can't that license just can't be transferred, unless he wants to open up another establishment. So that's <clears throat> it, that is what it is, you know. Uh, that's about it. All right. Thank you, Alder Lefebvre. Alder Peterson. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, you know, I, I try to look at this from the from the standpoint of what benefits the most people in our community. And um, yeah, I've never really been put in this position where I have to make this sort of a decision. But and I and with that being said, I I love Indian food, I love Italian food, I love Thai food. You know, and and uh, I I you know I wish we could grant everybody a license. I kind of tend to agree um, that. You know, Harbor Winds Hotel and uh, Watershed Hotel, to me, um, seem, it seems like that would potentially benefit, um, you know, more people within, within the city than, than some of the smaller venues. Um, but again, uh, this is a very uh, challenging decision. I, I guess I don't really have anything else to say. <laughs> all right, oh, thank you, Alder Pearson. So for me, first of all, I would like to echo Alder Heidemann and say thank you for coming and presenting. It's not easy to come up here, especially when you're not used to it and try and state your case to us. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very hard decision. We have a lot of things that can happen. Um, I would love to see every single one of these businesses grow and sell liquor, but we can't. Um, as far as what I'm concerned, as far as the list I was given today, the only people that are, we weeded out all the people who didn't show up to present. I think we can all agree with that. You didn't show up, you aren't getting it. I think that's a fair acknowledgement. Um, I have notes for all of everybody that presented today. Um, there's great things about all of them. I mean, we have to start somewhere. So we either are going to have to decide, and I, I, I'm not going to do ties if we don't, if we have a tie on any of these, we are just going to not have that license be open. Um, but otherwise, for me, the ones that stood out were was actually the first one, Watershed, because they, they told us right away from the beginning how much money they're bringing into the city, how much they're bringing into the county and things like that. Another big one for me was the pig stock. You've been here for almost 20 years. Uh, I think it, it's really great to, you know, reward that continued, you know, kind of um, business and being a good uh, business owner in our community. I also 
love the idea of Harbor Winds with the unique experiences, bringing in you know all these other things that the city doesn't have too much of. And CNG, that is, that is a really tough one with what is currently going on. Um, but that's where I'm at right now. Uh, Alder Heideman. Uh, I'm, are they all aware of another way they can achieve a license by spending, I think it's $10,000? Yeah. And then you don't have to go through this process. It's a lot. Again, that's a, that's, that's, I know. I just want to bring it up because otherwise a lot of people don't say, hey, you know, I could have bought that license. And, and uh, I know if in the case of Watershed with the money that they're bringing in, we'd really like to have them buy that license so we'd have another couple of licenses to, right. to, to issue. But just, just make sure that you all knew about that. Yep. Thank you, Alder Heideman. Alder Lefebvre. Yes, uh, some of the discussions that we've had, I'm also a member of the uh, Redevelopment Authority. Uh, there are plans on doing a lot of stuff on our riverfront mm -hmm. that uh, would uh, facilitate, you know, having like a pathway and uh, development all along the river. So those areas that are attached to the river would fall neatly into some of the plans that are that are there, so uh, you know that's another thing that that uh, really comes to my mind, be, being privy to some of the discussions that go on on the redevelopment authority. Thank you, Alder Lefebvre. Are we having any dis ideas on as far as to who we're thinking to granting this? I know it's hard and awkward because we're all here and we can't go and talk about it quietly, not in public, but we have to talk about that now. So. Well, I'll just say that if I were to, if I had to pick three, um, I would pick CNG, although I'm still kind of confused by um, that whole situation. And it's my understanding that if, if they uh, get to the end of the year, they don't have a liquor license. I think that that uh, could potentially put that business in in uh, in a bad uh, spot. My second uh, uh, one that I would consider is the uh, watershed hotel. Again, I think that benefits a large larger number of people within the city. And um, as much as I like pizza t and uh, Indian food, I would have to go with Harbor Winds Hotel as my third choice. Thank you, Alder Peterson. Oh, Alder Lefebvre, okay. and then Alder Hedman. Okay, I, uh, I, I agree with uh, a lot of what uh, Alderman Peterman said, but uh, using as a building block some of the plans that uh, the city has for our, you know, our green space and our types of, having venues that uh, people could congregate at would be a very good idea. So. Yeah, I, I'm confused about this. Do we have two licenses yes, to give away? we have two. We only have two, we don't have three. No, we have two. Dan, uh, Alder Pearson was just giving us his top three that he had after okay. the presentations, which it's good to know where we're all sitting, and then we can uh, move from there. Okay, I, uh, then I also uh, agree with him on, on his three choices, but the biggest thing for me is making a building block for some of the ideas that are being hashed around about uh, the area of our river and what we can do with it. Uh, connecting all of that area together starts like having a building block uh, that we can start from. And, and uh, so my two main ones are the, uh, the uh, harbor winds and uh, the one that the, you have, the watershed. Yeah, the watershed. Okay. Uh, uh, because you know, they have already proven that they, uh, they're bringing money into the city. Thank you, Alder Lefebvre. Alder Heideman. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, okay, so I, I see we've got it narrowed down between the committee members. The one that uh, I have a problem with is uh, not uh, looking at Club Leon's because he's right in the middle. He's right in the middle of development. Mm -hmm. Every one of those taverns on that block has a, has a, has a legal li license to sell liquor, except for him. Okay, so. He's got all this, this, all these people coming into his area, but he's not going to be able to serve those people as his competitors are. I think that puts him at a, at a distinct disadvantage, as would it be on Michigan Avenue. 
they're at a disadvantage because we don't have more licenses. But he has the capacity, uh, though he hasn't been in, been in business for a long time. Um, I, I think he's at a, he's at a spot where he really would need the license to be able to survive. Sure. Thank you, Walter Heidemann. Well, echoing what Alder Heidemann said, just with Michigan Avenue, um, we have two, because Ricardo, you're on Michigan Avenue as well, yeah. All right, so we have two that are also on Michigan Avenue, one on Indiana, which, like Alder Heidemann said, does put those businesses at a bit of a disadvantage because of the proximity to other businesses of that type. Just something to think about. <laughs> yes, of course. Yep. Um, so you mentioned the reserve licenses. Uh, we're not. We're not going to be doing enough volume to justify right. spending ten thousand dollars on a liquor license. Uh, however, just so that I know, because I've heard different things from different people, is there one only one reserve license left that can be granted? Um, is that is that true? There's 16, okay, so that was a false, got it, all right. <laughs> There's been one that I know of that's been taken. Oh, we have three that have been, that okay, are taken. so there are plenty of those. Okay, sounds good. And then when do, do the, um, that six month rule, is that just, I believe that's when that you're running? issued the license, right? Okay. Or when you're stopped using the license, it's the six month rule. Or if you if your business doesn't operate or sell alcohol within six months, you're supposed to supposed to go back to the city. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. All right. Any other questions? And I will say too, just echoing for you how it's unfair for these Michigan Indiana and Indiana Avenue. It's also can be unfair for the C and G too, because they are operating currently with a liquor license. And if Simon decides to walk, you know, take his license with him, now we're having a, a bar restaurant that is used to selling spirits, no longer being able to do that. I guess I do have one question for CNG. So you have limited days you're open currently. Would you be looking to expand those days soon or in the future? Uh, come, just, yeah. That is our plan. Okay. Yeah. For more days and um, earlier lunch hours. Lunch hours, yeah. all right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can make a motion or we can keep sitting here and twiddling our thumbs. <laughs> So I'll start. I, I would move that we grant uh, the first uh, the first liquor license to CNG Bar and Lounge. Looking for a second. Second. All righty. All in favor of approving that license, state aye. Aye. All opposed. Aye. Chair votes aye. You have your license. Thank you. All righty. So we have one license left. Are we, Alder Pearson? I'll make a motion uh, that the second license goes to uh, Watershed Hotel. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. Watershed, you have your license. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming and presenting. Item number 12, RO number 67-24-25 by the city clerk submitting various license applications. Thank you. Um, the staff is, I believe there are six 
applications on this RO and step is recommending the following. Um, we are recommending granting the driftwood agent, change of agent contingent upon the agent clarifying that he has not violated federal law, state law, or other local ordinances. There was what seems to be a miscommunication on the application where the agent who we're looking to have, they are looking to have it changed to, selected yes on um, having violated some federal laws and then later in the application selecting no. I can't find any times or anywhere that uh, the agent has a criminal record, so I am inclined to believe that he does not have one, which is why um, I'm recommending uh, granting contingent to that. Second one is uh, staff is recommending holding the class, beer, class B liquor license for Me Fortuna LLC and, excuse me, calling in a member of the LLC to the LHPF, LHPS staff committee meeting. Um, that member did not reveal a past um, conviction that uh, the committee, the staff committee feels would be, it would behoove us to call him and to talk about it. Um, third, um, we are recommending granting the Class B liquor license for Lakeshore Bowling LLC contingent upon one of the members of the LLC answering that he has no pending violations of any laws or ordinances against him. Um, just that one member of the LLC did not answer one specific question, just want to make sure before we grant that. So that would be grant contingent. Um, fourth, uh, recommending granting with warnings um, the PEDEX LLC application contingent upon a correctly filled out appointment of agent form. So first, one of the members of the LLC of the PEDEX LLC application um, did not reveal, um, I believe, past ordinance violations and a past con conviction. And second, it can be granted with warnings once the appointment of agent form is granted so that someone has the ability to contract or act on behalf of the LLC. Um, fifth, uh, we recommend granting the Class B beer license and the Class C license to Ambara Soraya Bar and Grill Incorporated, contingent upon the what seems to be the sole owner of the corporation completing the responsible beverage server training requirement. Finally, um, recommend granting with warnings the cigarette and tobacco license to Andy's Bar and Restaurant. I believe that the member of the LLC just did not reveal a prior conviction for something. All right, thank you. Uh, I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, for the second item for the Class B liquor license for My Fortuna LLC, what is it? Is there a reason why we want them to come at? So like specific reasons? we've had um, in the past some of the applications, um, the applicant has not um, answered and revealed that they have a past con criminal conviction for, I believe it's either strangulation or domestic abuse. Um, so we want to make sure that that's not alcohol related in any way um, and want to ask why he has been answering no um, for the past several years for that having that conviction. So that's why we feel it's important to call him in. All right, thank you. And then also the, the liquor license for Lakeshore Bowling. Yes. Is that? That is a switch. So earlier in the year, I believe it was my first week that I was actually working here, um, uh, Mr. Pettick unfortunately passed away and his wife, um, we moved the license over to her yep. since we're allowed to do that by statute. And she is giving the license over to this new PEDEX LLC. The members have changed, it's new people. It's gonna be that same Class B liquor license that's already been given to um, the wife. So it's not a new one, it's right. just exchanging hands. I guess my question would be, so for the members in that LLC, does it have to be every, all the members that are part of that LLC that have to get go through that vetting? Yes. Oh, okay, yep. all right, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Already, I am looking for, um, oh, Alder Peterson. Say I'll move that we adopt the RO uh, with staff recommendations. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed, chair votes aye, that's approved. All right, next meeting date will be October 30th, 2024. Looking for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. All in favor? Chair vote aye. We are adjourned at 554. Thank you, everybody.